QuickBooks Online 2022. Income from bank feeds and income categories. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our bank feed practice file. We set up with our 30 day free trial, holding down control, scrolling up a bit to get to the one, two, five percent currently in the home page, otherwise known as the get things done page. In the business view as compared to the accounting view, to change to the accounting view is something you can do by going to the cog up top, switch to the accounting view down below. We will be toggling back and forth between the two views either here or by jumping to the sample company file currently in the accounting view. Going back to our bank fee practice file, opening up a few tabs to put reports in by right clicking on the tab up top and duplicating it. Back to the tab to the left, right clicking again and duplicating again. Back to the tab to the left one more time, right clicking again and duplicating again. As that is thinking, let's see where the reports are located over here on the accounting view, which is on the left hand side under reports. Back on over to the business view in the second tab, the reports are located in the business overview and then in reports. Closing up the hamburger. Up top, we're gonna to be opening up one of the faves, that being the balance sheet, the big balance sheet report. There it is. Range change up top from 01, 01, 21, 212, 31, 21, and run. Go into the tab to the right, and we're going to go back into the business overview again, into the reports, closing the hand boogie, and going down to the profit and loss, the other major financial statement report, otherwise known as the income statement, range change. 01, 01, uh, 21, 2, we're going to say this is 12, 31, 21, and run. And then we'll go tab to the right one more time. We're going to go to the to the business overview and then the reports. Closing up the hamburger. This time typing in for the trusty trial balance. The underappreciated but well uh, well deserved uh, credit worthy report, which I would recommend using. 010121 to 123121 and run basically balance sheet on top of the income statement without the subtotals we're going to go to the balance sheet back to the balance sheet we're thinking about items that are going to be increases now when we think about our bank feeds let's first open up the bank feeds let's go to the tab to the left and go to the bank feeds which under the business view is going to be on the bookkeeping side of things on the left hand side and then transactions up top and then into the banking however we're most likely gonna be adding some transactions as we go or accounts as we go, which I don't like the way the business view personally does that at this point in time. So I'm gonna switch it now to the accounting view so we can see where the bank feeds are located in the accounting view and more easily add accounts, which I would recommend at this point in time, unless QuickBooks changes its business view format. So we're gonna switch it on over to the accounting view so that we can see where the bank feeds are located which is under banking now and then the banking up top tab closing up the hamburger this is the information we pulled over from our financial institution currently in what i call bank feed limbo it's been pulled over but doesn't have the information to be included yet in the final product that being the balance sheet the income statement otherwise known as the financial statements so now we want to go into the deposit side of things so if i look at the balance sheet then We've got increases to the checking account. So as we add these, we're gonna have some increases, which will be good considering we have a negative balance here. And we want to assign them then to go into the tab to the right, the income accounts. So typically we're gonna be working on a type of scenario and that where the bank feeds are gonna be as easy as possible. So if I jump back on over to our flow chart, then we're in the customer area. We're thinking about how can we record our revenue in as easy a way as possible, not only being on a tax basis, but being dependent on the bank feeds, which will be dependent on what type of industry we are in. One of the easiest industries to be able to do that would be if you're getting paid from platforms such as like YouTube, AdSense, uh, other kind of teaching platforms and whatnot. And so now we're gonna, we're gonna use that method and then we'll talk about deviations from that method to more of a full service cash basis system and then to an accrual type system, possibly adding inventory at future presentations as well. So right now we're gonna be basically on a cash basis system. So we're not going to be using the sales receipt or the invoice to record the sales, but recording them with the deposit form 
as the deposit clears the bank with the bank feeds, which is not the design of QuickBooks, but does work and is easier. It does create our financial statements, but we lose some of the detail, including being able to sort our revenue as easily by customer and sort it by item, inventory or service items, which are typically done with sub ledgers. So if I go back on over here, then I'm gonna add some accounts as we go into these accounts. Now, notice the general rule is that we, you don't want too many accounts on the income side of things. You want broad account categories and then to support those categories with sub ledgers breaking out by customer, breaking out by item, whether that be inventory or service items that you're selling. However, if you are just re dependent on the deposits, those sub reports aren't gonna be as useful. So you might be more likely to add some more income accounts possibly by the platform. So you might call it like YouTube income or AdSense income or uh, you know Amazon income or book rental income or something like that, uh, more so than you otherwise would in, in other types of industries where you would typically want to be not putting things in place by the actual customer that you're getting the money from because you can get that on the sub report. Okay, let's go back to the bank feeds. We're gonna add some more of these categories as we go. So I'm sorting this time by the amount up top so that we can see then the inflows. So I'm focused in on the inflows, which is gonna hopefully be revenue. I'm gonna start with Amazon because Amazon is a good example of having one customer that might be giving us income for multiple different things. And you can see the same kind of issue that might be taking place in different types of industries as well, depending on the things that you are selling, the things that you are doing in order to generate revenue. And you could have a similar kind of scenario on the expense side of things, meaning you might have one vendor that you purchase multiple different things for. So you can have a similar kind of situation that would be, well, how do I want to allocate these to the account? And how can I make that as automatic and automated as possible with the use of the bank feeds? So for example, Amazon, you might have something like affiliate marketing type of income or something like that. You might sell things on Amazon. You might have royalties that you're getting on Amazon for books that are being sold. So you could, and you might have different locations that you have that you're selling on Amazon. You might have Amazon Prime type of uh, presentation stuff that could be on uh, Amazon. And you might want to distinguish then those different things into different line items on the uh, your income statement into different accounts. You can't do that by distinguishing the different items that you're selling because you don't have you're not using a create sales receipt or an, inv an invoice. That's one way you can deal with that problem. You could actually go in and make basically a sales receipt and match this up to the sales receipt, the sales receipt allowing you then to enter the detail of the item that you're selling. But that's an added step uh, in the process. So if you wanted to use the bank feed to use the deposit to put directly into the system, you could then say, okay, is there any difference in the memo that I'm getting uh, in terms of these different items that I could use to set up a rule that would distinguish these different types of things, even though they're coming from the same customer. And so that's the kind of thing uh, we can look at. You also might say, even though they're both coming from Amazon, maybe I'm going to make a vendor that's going to be separate. Maybe I make this one Amazon.co, which is distinguishable from Amazon.com.California, for example. So even though they're the same vendor in actuality, they're, they're both the company of Amazon in this case, I might actually make a different vendor as a way to distinguish all the items that are coming from that, you know, for that particular reason, if I'm using the bank feeds to give us a little bit more detail. So I'm gonna create the Amazon.co here as a customer, and we're gonna say save. Now, clearly Amazon is kind of like a platform, but they're basically our customer in this instance. And then we're gonna say the income account, instead of having it go into the generic service income, I'm gonna make another income category account. Let's add a category. And I'm gonna imagine this is like from Amazon Prime type of income. So I'm gonna say it's video content or something like that that they're paying me for. So I'm gonna hit the drop down, and I'm gonna say that this is gonna be some kind of income account. And then I'll just say other income. The second category is not too important. So other primary income, and then I'm gonna call this just video content income, which is kind of generic. So I'm trying to make it generic. I could make it less generic and call it uh, Amazon Prime income, Amazon Prime video content income. 
I might want to do that uh, in this case to give me that detail on the income statement given the fact that I don't have that added detail from the items on the sub ledgers. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. I'm gonna talk more about the rules later, so I'm not gonna set up the rules for this one at this point in time. We'll get back into this later and jump into those rules and think about, okay, how can I distinguish Amazon income here versus Amazon income from affiliate marketing possibly or Amazon income from other items and automate that just coming in from the bank feeds. We'll talk about that more when we get to the rules area. For now, let's just add this one. And what that's going to do then is if I go to the balance sheet, hold control down and scroll up and I run this report again, I can go into my checking account, go into that checking account and that big $4 or whatever it was should be in here somewhere. Where's that $4 that I got? Where's the $4? There it is. So there's the 450. It's a deposit form. If I go into that one, we'll see that it doesn't go back to the bank feeds. It goes back to a deposit form because that's the form used for an increase to the checking to the checking account. So I'm going to close this back out. I'm going to scroll back up top, go back then to our report, go to the tab to the right to the income statement or profit and loss, run it again. And so now we've got this other category called video content income that we put here. We also have the customer that's gonna be set up in the customer detail to see that. I'm gonna add another tab. I'm gonna to go to the first tab, right click on it and duplicate that tab so that we have another tab we can be navigating around before our reports tab. Now we're in, you'll note the accounting view as opposed to the business view. And I want to go into the sales area on the left hand side, which is right there, sales area. And then we're gonna go into the customers section. So in the customer section, closing this out, and we now have amazon.com as the customer. If I go into it, you'll note, I don't have the normal transactions I would have because I, it wasn't a sales receipt, it wasn't an invoice, and it wasn't a, a, uh, a sales a payment receipt. But I, I still wanna add the customer in that way because it helped me set up my rules. And it also will help me if I wanna make a detailed report and, and basically filter it by customer. So if I went into the cash detail here, for example, and I wanted to filter it by deposits and by customer, then that added customer field becomes useful. So we're losing a little bit of information by not having the sales receipt or invoice, but we're gaining in terms of ease or quickness of data input. Okay, let's try another one. Let's go back to the tab to the left. I'm gonna look for another one here. So I'm gonna try this one, which is a Google one. So this is Google AdSense. So, so now I'm gonna say, let's add that one and let's pretend that this one is for like YouTube revenue, YouTube revenue that we're going to have. So I might, I want, I want to add it to the, to the vendor again. You could have multiple different areas that you might get paid by Google for, for different things. In which case, again, you might wanna change, like I might call it instead of just Google, Google AdSense, and maybe I get paid by Google for something else and I can change, I can have different vendors which might help me to sort it. I'm gonna basically add that. I'm gonna say this is gonna be saved for that customer. The category, I'm gonna put back into my generic category that I put up top, which was the video content, the video video content income account. So I'm, so I'm gonna put it in that generic category and I'm combining the different areas, Amazon Prime and the, the I'm assuming YouTube revenue into this video content income account. You might want to break them out again. You might want to do what I, what I said generally you wouldn't do if you had a full service accounting, which would be to actually list the customer who paid you, right? Which would be the platforms in this case, at, you know, Google AdSense and, uh, and then the other customer that I just did Amazon that paid you. But I'm going to put it into the generic category here. Again, we could set a rule for this to make it more automated in the future, but I'll get into rules uh, a little bit more in the future with regards to these items. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. And if we see what happens, if I go to the balance sheet, hold down control, scroll up a bit, we're going to refresh this report. And if I go into the checking account, hold control, scroll back down, and I'm going to look for Google. Now notice again, I can sort in here if I have the detail in Google. So I might say, I might filter something like this by customizing the report. And I might say, I want to filter possibly by the name of Google. 
and that's and that gives you some more detail even though you don't have as much detail in in uh in the sub reports breaking this information out your sales out by by customer going back on over the other side is going to be in the income statement if i run that report in the income statement now in this uh, website or video content income we should have the two items that are now included in there from the two different basically customers that are going into that area for similar kind of things for uh, video content we're imagining let's do another one i'm going to go back to the first tab again and let's try one that's slightly different for amazon here so this is a different amazon account which I might want to say, okay, this is coming from something that's going to be a little bit different. So I'm actually going to make another vendor. I could keep the same vendor and have them go into two separate accounts and then basically use my rules to determine something in the memo to identify that these are, these are going to two different accounts, although the same vendor. Or you might want to adjust the vendor and say, I'm going to make this a different vendor by calling it amazon.com, possibly uh, CA on the end here so i have a different vendor even though they're both amazon here but that'll help me kind of to distinguish and sort my data possibly uh, as i sort it so i'm going to go ahead and save that as another uh, customer not vendor customer here so i'm going to imagine this is from like book royalty revenues i'm just making this up but let's imagine this is coming in from the book royalty so we wrote a book and they're giving us royalties so i'm just going to call it book revenue or book royalty uh, revenue so that means that this account that it's going to go, be going to, I'm going to make a new account and say this isn't for my primary, this isn't for their, their video streaming thing. Amazon does everything apparently. Or this is going to be for book revenue. So I'm going to say book revenue, which you might more properly call royalty revenue or something like that. But I'll just call it book revenue and I'm going to go ahead and save it. So we're going to save that and then say, let's go ahead and add that one. So let's add it. And then if I go back on over, I'm going to say, okay, what happened to the checking account now? We're going to refresh, run it again, and then go into the checking account. We should have an increase this time to the checking. I'm going to once again sort by it. I'm going to go to the customers up top and I'm going to filter. And you could filter by deposits, but I don't even need to. I can just go to the name here. And I'm going to say this is going to be Amazon, this one, which will give me just that information, even though I have multiple sources from Amazon and there, there is our book revenue item. I'm going to go back up top and then go on over to our income statement. And on the income statement, I'm going to run it, hold down control. And now I've got another income account up top, which is going to be the book revenue with a whopping 735 in it. It's not at the best seller yet, but it's it's gonna get there. In any case, let's go back to the first tab and do another one. So for this one, I'm gonna look at an audible kind of one. So this one is, is basically Amazon again, but now they, they have another name for it. So it's gonna be audible. This would be like revenue if you've got, a, if you've got like an audible book that is through basically audible, which is I think Amazon. So now I can change the name on it again. So it's audible. So I'm gonna say that's gonna be my customer so let's put that in as the customer adding it and say that's the that's the customer and then uh, on this one i won't put it into video editing you might be tempted and it might be fine to just put it into audible income because the only place that you have your audio audible books might be audible but there might be other places that you might put your audible book in the future or something like that so it might be better to have a more generic category of basically you know uh, audiobook revenue or something like that so you can choose either one that you would that you would like i'm going to add the category and i'm going to say that it's going to be an income account and let's say that this is going to be other primary income and i'm going to call it audiobook audio book revenue like so and so i'll save it there save it there and then we could make a rule based on that. We'll talk more about rules later. So let's go ahead and add that. And then if I go back onto my, to my balance sheet and run it again and drill down onto my checking account, checking account, and then I can sort this kind of data by the, by the customer, which is useful. So I can go up top and say, let's customize this one and filter it and look for then the name of audible audible checking that out 
And so here's the detail for Audible that I can, I can kind of run a report still and see that information even though I'm not using invoices, sales receipts, products, or service items for it. I'm gonna go back then to my report. Let's go to the tab to the right and look at the P&L, customizing it. Hold on, not customizing it. I just wanna run it again so it's fresh. I wanna work with fresh reports. So there's the audiobook revenue up top on that one, adding another income account. Again, if you called it Audible, then that would be fine in, in theory there, but because we don't have the sub ledgers, but in general, you kind of want the generic item. And then if I had other audiobook places, then possibly I can put that into the same area here and still get the added detail by sorting reports by, by the customer. Okay, let's try another one. Let's go back to the first tab again and let's try an interest. So we got interest basically from the bank. So they gave us a little bit of interest here, which is good considering inflation seems like it's uh, uh, rearing its ugly head at this point in time. So we could use a little bit of interest, but the, the good 21 cents right there. So we're going to then say this is coming from the bank. So we could put this in, in here and put whatever your financial institution is. I'll just call it bank. And I'm going to add that. Now, the bank isn't really a customer or a, a vendor, but those are our two options. And I'd like to add something so I can sort by that item. So I'm going to add it as a customer. And then I'm going to say that we want another income account. So let's make an income account for the interest income. And we'll hit the drop down. Now, this one you could put into the, to the normal income account here, which will put it up top. But you might say, hey, interest isn't part of my normal operations. So maybe I want it on the bottom because it's not really part of like what I do. It just happens to be a little bit of income I get on top. So I'm going to say, let's put that on the bottom in other income. And I'm going to call it interest income, interest income with my wise investing from my wise investing. So I'm going to go ahead and save it and close it. And so there we have that. We could make a rule on it, but I'm not going to at this point. We'll talk more about rules later. Let's save it. And then I'm going to go back to the tab to the right on the balance sheet, run it. And then I could go into my checking account, going into the checking account again, drilling back on down towards the source stuff. And let's go ahead and and do a customization here and filter this by the bank. So I'm going to say let's filter it by the name, which is just the bank name and run it and that's an easy way that we can basically use that use the the customer information to sort this data and get a little bit more information i'm going to go back on over let's go to the tab to the right this is going to be the income statement running it again and we have the income but it's not up top basically we got the income minus the expenses it will give us then the the uh, net income on a a book basis and then we've got the other income down here, including that unrealized income that we talked about before from our stocks and bonds we're imagining and the interest income, which is really investment income, not really part of our what we do in general. So that's why we might put it on the bottom as other income so that we can get that subtotal of what we actually do uh, as the as the income line item here. Okay, so that's the general idea of it. In future presentations, we'll get into a bit more detail on the rules related to those items and add some more of those, those other uh, items possibly with those rules.